Wonderful. Awesome. Lovely and fantastic. It is another Monday. And it's great to be here with you again. This is today's woman, COPUSA Radio. And we have our wonderful, wonderful mothers here. We're about to have a wonderful time. It's going to be awesome. It's a full house today. And, you know, you need to call a friend, call a friend, and call a friend. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. So it's a friend, a friend, all of it. So, but you, whoever you need to call, all of it combined, it's time to have a good time. And so you are with us, COP USA Radio again. All the seven sun here at the studio, we salute you. And I have with me, as always, First Lady Henrietta Kusi, First Lady of Tennessee District, Knight to Reverend Benjamin Kusi. <laughs> no one makes it out today. Uh, she's a mother of three boys and one girl. We have Jeremiah, Joshua, Jonathan, and Jenna Nicole Kusi. She has professionally been in the accounting field, uh, in the youth and pension ministry, and also loves women and young children, always in the Sunday school. First Lady Henrietta, it's always a blessing to have you. Once again, you are welcome to today's woman. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here with all our beautiful mothers. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. And I'm off to First Lady. Uh, we have Mrs. Joyce Cumson here. And Mrs. Joyce Cumson is married to Pastor Samuel Cumson. She has four kids, Samuel, Isabel, and the twins, Josiah and Joel. Now they're in Frankfurt District. And she's uh, secretary for the National Chaplaincy Committee and also part of the National Literature Committee. First Lady... Joyce Kinsing, it's always a blessing to have you. It's been ages, but it's good to have you here again. So you're welcome. Thank you so much, First Lady Gifty, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here too. All right. God bless you. God bless you. And we are going to go to the beautiful Hawaii. I don't know the temperature over there, the thermostat, or however you want to look at it, or the ambience, or the energy over there. But you could tell from First Lady Dora that she's having a different vibe today. So we have First Lady Dora Very J. She is married to Reverend Dr. Very J, and they are blessed with three awesome kids. And Oye. She has, uh, you know, communications background, uh, bachelor's in communication from Elmhurst College. Our college authored uh, five books. The last one is The Preacher's Foundation with her husband. And I uh, hear the uh, base in Hawaii working with skilled, uh, she's a skilled trainer for kids with behavioral problems. Firstly, Dora Bernie McJay, you're looking fly. It's good to have you again. Thank you so much. It's, it's awesome to be here today. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. When I, whenever I make it to Hawaii, please take me to that beach, you guys. We're having yes. too much fun that day. We are waiting for you. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. And I'm off to Canada. I love to come with me uh, next door neighbor. I've not, you know, I don't know the distance, but somehow she feels next door. We have our mama, mama Debbie Eggman, married to Apostle Daniel Eggman, and they are area heads, uh, North York. And mommy is a mother of strong men. So they have the North York area in Toronto, Canada. They are in charge of that. They've been former missionaries to Guyana in South America, has a background as an early childhood educator, horticultural, and also herbal stuff. Mommy also has granddaughter. Mama Debbie, always a blessing to have you. You are ever welcome. Thank you so much. And I'm so blessed and honored to be among such a, an illustrious, illustrious panel of beautiful women. God Mommy, you put it so, it sounds so, you know, poetic. I, it feels good just hearing it sound like that. So, <laughs> so somebody said, ooh, some goosebumps right there. Thank you for putting it such way. God bless you. And we have our mommy, we miss you. And today, mommy is looking very executive. We have our mommy, Mama Margaret Ofori in the house. She's married to Apostle John Ofori. Uh, they've been married for over 28 years. Right now, the regional first family of Ohio and also the National Secretary of the Church of Pentecost, COP, uh, right here. And also, our mommy professionally has worked as a trained teacher, as a social worker, and an author working on her book that is about to come out. And mommy, what's the title? I just 
when food becomes poison, my own personal journey to weight loss. And I sure need that one. So I can't wait to have it. <laughs> so Mama Margaret Ofori, it's a blessing to have you. You are welcome. Thank you very much, Mother. And may the Lord bless you. It's been a long time. I miss you all. God bless you all for inviting me back one more time. Thank amen, you. amen. And mommy, you need to take a picture and blow it up. You look very presidential today. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank awesome. You. We are all to Ghana. And Mama Doris today really looks like the professor. <laughs> Mama Doris Sotunyako is married to Apostle Laurie Sotunyako. He is the fad in charge of the financial, you know, business of the entire Church of Pentecost globally. And right here with DK Anand Temple in a crowd, Mommy has uh, six strong children, three men, uh, three young ladies. She uh, has worked, you know, professionally as a lecturer at uh, Kumasi uh, Polytechnic, then now KTU. And mommy also has an MBA from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Uh, loves Women Issues, Women Conferences, three times the host of Women on Fire Conference. Mordoris, you sure look like a professor today. You're welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Maybe I have to go back to my writing to upgrade myself to be a professor. But thank you for, for that prophecy. Thank you. <laughs> And off to Ghana again, Mommy Dearest, today she looks sweet 16 and less and very relaxed. We have our Mama Mama Abigail. Dr. And Mrs. Abigail Che is in the house. Dr. And Mrs. Abigail Che is the head of the Department for Nursing and Midwifery. That's the faculty head at the Pentecost University. She's a lecturer there. She's a guru there since 2014. Currently, she's also in Ghana on the national sphere. Dr. Mrs. Che is the president of the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. And she has been married for over 37 years to Apostle Professor Peter Hiniche. He's also a past, you know, rector of the Pentecost University. And I keep saying, it, and it's true, I am saving that topic. Home to office romance. Mommy, we are about to treat it very soon. <laughs> and our mommy also, an apostle retired in ministry from, you know, Pentecost uh, Winnipeg. That was where their last station as the area head for the Winnipeg Church. Our mommy is blessed with five children and four grandchildren. Mama Abigail, Mommy dear, it's, it's a blessing to have you again. You're all welcome. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be with you. But please, you give me 18 so that I can vote. <laughs> if you give me 16, I can't vote in Ghana. And I always get to vote. All right, mommy. So we have outed to 18. <laughs> upgrade me to, to 18, then I can vote. Yes. <laughs> it's beautiful and it's joyous. You know, sometimes life is hard, but we have to. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And it's good to have our mothers, wonderful women of God, and the atmosphere here is fabulous. All this time again, salute to you. Today's women team, salute to you. My dearest husband, salute to you. And all our people who are always sharing for us kindly share it's a blessing today we're about to talk about something very great the topic you know there's this song take the shackles on my feet so i can dance and i quite remember in college i had a group of friends and on saturdays you know you do your laundry that was the times that you do your laundry and after the laundry we eat together and one of the songs that was that and i could remember as boogie like there was no tomorrow shackles of my feet and then you know so i can dance trying to show who has the moves and all that well today our topic is unshackled and so if you are wondering what it means then stay tuned but more we go i'd love to start with you i want to start with what nelson mandela says and i think that when you need to talk about shackles and freedom and all that he's a good person to go to so nelson mandela says for to be free is not merely to cut off one's chains but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. I will take it again. For to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects 
and enhances the freedom of others. I want to add also Thomas Jefferson, where he says, we hold these truths to be self-evident. I know everybody knows it by now, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thomas Jefferson. Here we go. You know, talking about shackles and unshackled, for you, mommy, when you hear those two terminologies, shackled, unshackled, shackles, shackle. Mommy, please, what comes to your mind if these words are thrown at you? Thank you, and we thank God for another opportunity to discuss issues of so much importance to all of us. Um, a shackle, normal shackle, it's a piece of metal that is used to fasten a person's usually ankles to prevent the person from moving. Um, another name for it is fetters. People use, can use them interchangeably. Mm. But when, based on what we are discussing, when I, I hear the word shackle, what comes into my mind immediately is restraint. Mm. Restraint, you are doing something, something that is preventing you from being yourself. Mm -hmm. Your freedom is taken away from you. You have a limitation. You cannot move to the level that you really want to move to. Um, when somebody's in shackles, progress is prevented because you can't move on. And we have our freedom in our movement. When we are able to move around, you are free to do whatever. I remember when we had the lockdown and we couldn't go out. Yeah. I mean, you felt imprisoned in your own home because there were so many other things you wanted to do outside, but because you had been locked down in your your house. And I remember um, we did a study on it back here at home among students and among people uh, in, outside. And there were so many psychological problems because people had been hemmed in. And sometimes you, you, they were hemmed in with people they didn't even like, people they didn't want to stay with. Mm -hmm. So um, when, when somebody's in shackles, it's a real challenge in the sense that you are held back. You are prevented from being free. And the freedom that God has given us is very, very important because it is in the freedom that you can exercise, um, you can be yourself and exercise whatever rights are yours. Yeah. So when it comes to this issue of being shackled, I, I don't want, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I don't like it in the sense that it, it limits me. That's right. If, if a person is shackled, the person is limited and the person cannot um, really be at the potential that he or she is supposed to be at. Mm -hmm. Now, unshackled, mm -hmm. of course, would be the opposite. That's in the right. sense that you are now released, you are free to do whatever you think it's right for you to do. Mm. But you see, the two words, when it's a person shackled and when it's a person unshackled, um, for, you, for you to be shackled, you could be physically shackled. Mm -hmm. That is when you are, you are tied down physically, I mean, with um, some fetters or some lock and you cannot um, move. You know, when I was um, in the 90s, I was on a project in um, a certain part of Ghana. Mm. And I went and met women where in that culture, the women were supposed to be seen and not heard. Mm. And so when a baby girl is born, Unfortunately, they start pulling the lip. 
Oh, they start pulling their lips. They start pulling their lips. And at a certain time, they, they actually make a hole in both lips. So when the woman gets married and the husband is going to going out of the house, they actually put a padlock and lock the lips so that she cannot talk to anybody. Mommy, is this medieval times? I'm talking <laughs> in the 90s. I went and met remnants mm -hmm. of those people with the lips like that. My of goodness. course, I hear in the time of in the time of Kwame Nkrumah, he abolished it. So that was in the 60s, maybe that he abolished it. So I went and met the older women who had gone through that when they were younger. And mm. the, the sign was there with the lips there. Can you imagine when you cannot um, open your mouth to talk much more eat? So whoever wow. puts the padlock on your mouth comes and opens the padlock for you. Yeah. So there, there, there was there, there, there has been that kind of restriction, physical restriction, preventing people from moving. There have been, and then you go to the 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 um, what do you call it the prisons, and some people even in the Bible. Peter was tied down, Paul was tied down. They couldn't move because they had been physically shackled. Mm. But then we also have the mental shackle mm. where people have been indoctrinated to believe that they cannot amount to anything. Mm. And because they have believed that they have tied themselves up and feel that there is no freedom for them and that is even worse than the physical shackle because the physical shackle, somebody can come and unlock you. Mm -hmm. But with the mental shackle is within you. And until you train yourself to come out of it and believe that you are capable of something better than what you are in, you stay in it. Mm -hmm. So to be shackled could be physical, it could be mental. It could be in several other dimensions, but these are the two dimensions that I'd like to us to look at. Mm. Now, the good news is that when you are shackled, you can be unshackled. Mm. But a lot depends on your willpower to and your your willingness to allow God to unshackle. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. First lady Dora, I'm gonna come to you because when mommy talked about these men who had padlocks, I, I saw your reaction. I knew you had something to say. So I'm just going to come straight to you, just not throwing a question at you, but just your reaction, if you can go for it. Yes, sir. thank you so much. Yeah, I was just appalled by, by that, just hearing that, um, that some, a certain culture would even allow or think about doing that to, uh, to women. Mm -hmm. It is not right. Uh, I know mommy has said a lot, uh, my definition or my take on sh being shackled simply means uh, to be controlled through various forms of limitations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being placed in a position where you are limited in what you can do, you know, what you can say, how you can express yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, with all that she said, I believe that that, that, is, that is a very good, good definition um, of what she was, the example she was given of women that are you know, with padlocks being put on their mouth. Unimaginable. Yeah, it's it's very sickening. And, mm -hmm. you know, to hear that, it, it's really sad. Mm -hmm. And I know that we are going to look at the scopes and you know, various forms of, right. of shackles. And so we'll talk about that. But yeah, basically just put, being put in a, in, 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 in a form of limitation where you cannot fully express yourself. Mm. Mm. Exact thought, but I just cannot imagine that somebody would have to put a padlock on you so you don't speak up. Mama Doris, I'm just coming to you. We're looking at, you know, shackles and being unshackled. And that example that Mama Abigail just threw is like, you know, just blows my mind. Mama Doris. Don't, don't let it blow your mind yet. When I went to missions mm. and um, went to evangelize at a place, 
and they have this big tree with a lot of pots mm. and we just asked about it and they said it's a generational thing when your mommy gets into that situation every first lady that she gives birth to will by all means go there and marry that man at the shrine mm. yes and you don't have the opportunity to go anywhere and the pot is there that you have to go and fetch water and fill a very huge pot and you do that for the rest of your life till the pot is broken before you leave the place hey. so as like, yes so if you enter at the place at the age of six you are going to stay there when you get to puberty the man will marry you, give birth, and you are supposed to take care of the kids. And so that was what was going on mm -hmm. there. And we went there to evangelize. There was this pretty, pretty young lady in her 16s. And so when she heard about Jesus setting people free, somebody said freedom is the oxygen of the soul. And mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. When you have freedom, yeah, you are liberated. Mm -hmm. And this girl came and she accepted Jesus as a personal savior. And you know, she couldn't go back to the place. Immediately they heard that she had accepted Jesus. The, the men came for her and they gave her a very good beating. But this girl was so determined to liberate herself and her generation from that case. And you know what? She said, Jesus, I've heard that you have power to liberate. My only liberation is for this pot to be broken break mm. it and let everybody know that you have power to liberate that was a poor girl who had heard about jesus christ who saves mm. so the words that we say when we go out for rallies they are as powerful as the presence of jesus christ hallelujah Amen. so this girl said um she came for one revival and when she was going she knew she was going to be beaten but she said when she got home Everybody was seated and they were looking at her. Then they told her that your food is there. Go ahead. She took the food and she ate. Then the siblings called her and said, do you know what your Jesus has done for you? Uh -huh. said, what? He said, this afternoon, we were all seated here. And all that we saw was a lightning that hit your pot. My from goodness. The bottom, yes. Hallelujah. From the bottom top, it splintered open. Wow. And so now that it is open, you are liberated. Mm. So if you are, yes, this That's, is a testimony that will be the mind of people yeah. in all Guinea. Yeah. We were able yeah. to establish a, a, an assembly there, and the girl was liberated. She will come to church, and when she's dancing, you have to go and beg her mm. to go. Because now the shrine didn't want her. Uh -huh. She was they were afraid of her. Nobody <laughs> wanted to be her. Because right. then they see that she is now serving a superior God. Mm. A whole lot of testimonies mm. about those things. So these things are real. You see, may, when you go to the Western world, you may think that, but th these things are real situations. So mm. for me, it is anything that holds you captive, mm. anything that limits you, anything that puts you in prison, that restrains you, that pins you down, and also confines you. Anything that does any of these things are shackles. And it could be physical, as my Abigail girl said, even the donkey mm. in Matthew 20, he was tied. Mm. And his court was with him. You could be working at that time, but that was the limitation. And you see, you become unproductive when you, it happens like that. And it, look at this man at uh, Mark 5, 82, that mental man who had stayed in the uh, uh, cemetery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mental torture. He mm -hmm. thinks that is the best place for him to stay. Yeah. Who in his right, even when your, 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 your loved one dies and you cry, menubeko, menubeko, immediately they put that person in the grave. You want to quickly run back. <laughs> <I'm afraid. laughs> but you see, Satan can arrest the mind of people and they do things that are opposite to the ordinary things and they think it is right. Mm -hmm. And so Mama Abigail says something and that is where I want to. The mental one is 
is very, very serious. Mm -hmm. When something enters into the brain of someone and is being processed for the person to um, accept the wrong aspect of life, mm. it is the Holy Spirit to break that shackle. Yeah. Most yeah. people are not maximizing their potentials be just because they've been told that they cannot do it. Mm. And I want to end with this testimony. A friend just visited me this weekend and she was telling me she's outside. I don't want to mention it. She said the, the daughter went to school and when the daughter came back, they were choosing their um, courses. And the daughter came and said, my teacher says I can do uh, the only thing that I can do is uh, dance. Mm. And she said, I can't do one and come to our cultural center. <laughs> uh, well, let's go to your teacher. So when he said, he took the child to the teacher and said, my daughter can be an engineer. Uh -huh. You know what? Because of what the, the teacher told the child, it was so difficult. Mm. Mm delete that thing from the mind of the child mm. but my friend insisted and now the girl is, a, is i think a petroleum engineer or something mm -hmm. and she's doing very well so the uh. girl came, came 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 down to ghana and the mommy said when you came and they were asking you what do you do what did you tell them oh, he said he said i told them i'm an engineer he mm -hmm. said why why didn't you tell them that you are a dancer? You dance at what day? <laughs> so you see, all that I'm driving at is that the, the physical one, yes, is difficult, but the mental one is equally poisonous. Mm. Whereby even the person cannot share the thing that the person is going, the emotional stress that the person is going out for people to help. So mm -hmm. you physically, you see that the person is okay. The person may come to church and dance around, smile. But when the yeah. person is left alone, that is yeah. where Satan comes in with all these difficult thoughts. So I will end with Psalm 30, verse 11 to 12. One of okay. my favorites. It says, you turn my wailing into dancing. May God turn everybody who is wailing situation into a dancing situation. You see, you moved my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. May yeah. God clothe everybody with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not to be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are saying that when somebody is unshackled, it means the limitation is taken off. The burden is taken off. You are free indeed. And you can do whatever thing that you have to do. For the Bible says, whatever things your hands find doing, do it for the Lord of hosts is with you. There are no limitations when it comes to Christians. We can get out of everything that is pressing us down. We should seek the correct solution. And God is available unto us. God bless us all. Amen. Amen. Very in-depth. And that example, the it's so powerful that the young girl prayed and God answered her exactly like that. It's very powerful. God bless you so much. Mama Margaret, I'm just going to come to you. How can, just listening to all that our mothers have said in defining, how can a person know they are in a shackle? Like the mental that, you know, our mommy said, you don't even know. You can't see. They look joyous, but something is going on. How can a person assess themselves and be able to tell they are in a shackle? Hmm. Thank you very much. I think the word shackled, <laughs> it's a serious word. Mm. It's something that's it's very bad mm -hmm. and which I think even right from creation, God did not even want us to be in shackles. That is mm -hmm. the reason why the Bible says Jesus came to set captives free. Mm -hmm. It is not a good thing. It is a situation where we have, we call, I call it power and control. Mm. When somebody has power over you mm -hmm. and then controls you in every area, you mm. cannot even express yourself. Mm. There is no room for advancement. Mm. And when it happens, it makes you retarded in so many things. Mm. And sometimes it is at human. Sometimes, you see, 
in this world, two things I've come to realize is when you know your problem and you begin to seek for solution, it's okay. But sometimes when you don't know even what you are going through, mm. how do you even look for help? You see, and the Bible says something which I really, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we have the biblical truth and we have what? The, 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 the worldly truth. Mm. And we have what? Mental truth. The truth is always the truth. So for you to be aware, one, you have to understand your situation. Mm. What is bothering you? What are you going through? And if you know that this is my problem, then you begin to seek for. But sometimes the certain is people even don't know what they are going through. And sometimes it takes the grace of God to help the person. And even sometimes when you tell the person, hey, this is what you are going through, they may not even believe you or mm -hmm. accept it. You mm -hmm. see? So it is difficult. The most difficult part is when you are in the situation and you don't even realize, you don't even know, you don't understand, you have no clue what is going on. Mm -hmm. And that is a very serious thing. And right now in this world that we are living, you see a lot of, um, for example, even in marriage, let's take it in marriage. Okay. When you know that your marriage is, 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 is breaking or your marriage is not working very well, maybe you are the cause even of mm. that problem in the marriage. Mm -hmm. For example, let's take women. Mm. Maybe it's because you are nagging your husband, you are nagging your, but even you refuse to see that you are the source of the problem in the house. <laughs> and you keep complaining and complaining, my husband is this or my wife is this. Or maybe if you could even recognize the fact that you talk too much, you are always nagging, you are always being what? I mean, you are too much in the house and begin to <laughs> I think it will be so. But sometimes we don't even know. That we are the cause. Mm -hmm. And that is the most dangerous part, now, as you say. Mm -hmm. But once the Lord is so grateful to you and he opens your eyes and you see, oh my goodness, I am the problem. I'm the cause of all this. And then you begin to work or seek for help or begin to apply whatever you need to do. It breaks down that, that uh, shackle or, or that what? Uh, restriction or whatever. But the serious one is when you are the problem, but you don't even know. <laughs> because your eyes are closed, your ears are closed, everything about you is closed, and you don't even know. And when somebody even tries to help you, you refuse it, and you begin to point fingers at somebody. So we pray that may the Lord have mercy on us, so that we ourselves will know that we, if you are the problem, may the Lord open our eyes so that we know that we are the cause and then begin to look for help or begin to deal with it. That's what I have to say. Amen, amen. I, I, as uh, It sounded so funny, mommy, just listening to you, knowing the, not knowing you are the problem, complain that somebody else is the problem. How funny is that? I had a story, some person that was mad, a madman in the street would, would, would approach somebody and they say, I'm mad. Do you think I'm mad? <laughs> like, <laughs> I wonder what the answer should be. <laughs> they say I'm mad. And then when he's going to ask the question, do you think I'm mad? And everybody's running out. Like, it's like, I don't know what answer you expect to see. No yeah. idea, I'm coming to you as well. We are, thank you so much, for Marco. We are looking at how can a person identify that they are in shackles. The movie has brought us a, a hilarious twist to see that you are the problem, yet you're complaining everybody else is the problem. And sometimes, you know, there are some people that you wish you had the boldness to tell them you are the problem. And I remember some <laughs> elder that I knew, some person was causing a problem and the elder told the member, hey, a problem, ma, sorry. Although it got him in trouble. <laughs> they, they, had to, they had to sit down and have a meeting, but the elder had enough. I know some people will remember the, the prof, Professor Kwame Ketia will remember this story. The, the elder just had, had enough, just looked at it and said, oh, your problem, master. Well, it got him in trouble for speaking about things that shouldn't be said. Mama Debbie, I'm coming to you. Okay. <laughs> How do you just know that you are in a shackle? Okay. 
Yeah, my mommies have spoken so much. And, you know, like um, knowing that you're in a sh shackle, sometimes, like mom said, mom Margaret said, sometimes you don't know, but sometimes you can't be able, you don't feel good. You, you know you are free, but yet you feel you are bound. Mm. You mm. know you are free, but yet something is restricting you. Something mm. is making you not to feel so free to be able to move on and do the things that under normal circumstances you would do. Like I, I, Isaiah 52, God was telling them, he said, awake, awake, mm. put on your strength, O Zion, put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust, arise, Sit down, O Jerusalem. Lose yourself from the bands of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. And he said, you have sold yourself for nothing. We sell ourselves for nothing most mm. of the times. Mercy. We battle with things that, you know, like our mom said, we have the Lord. Mm. But sometimes we don't even know when the troubles come that this is the area I'm going through. This is what is going through. Sometimes we are oppressed. Mm. Sometimes we, we, we are struck down. And mm. yet, you know, we, we, we do not. And then sometimes too, one thing that I find that sometimes restricts us, you know you are free and that you have the liberty to be able to speak up when something is going wrong. Mm. You know the thing mm. is going wrong. Even in the church, my beloved, let us come up and say what it is. Uh, <laughs> you know this direction is not, something is going wrong that it's not good. But if you dare, like the elder said, you know, then you become a victim. So because of that, you know, at the end of the day, in the long run, it's going to bring problem. Yet you have to be shackled and keep quiet. Because if not, you, you feel like you will be victimized. And because of that too, things are not going the way they should. May God help us. Amen. May God help us so that we'll be free and free indeed. They said, when the sun shall set you free, you are free indeed. And yet, beloved, we are not free. May God mercy, help us. Amen. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Mommy, hmm. I, I just have to say, hmm. But first of all, you can hear it. I'm about to come to you. I want to acknowledge people. Mommy said the boldness to speak up. First of all, that's where I'm going to come to you to pick up from. I have so many people here with us. Thank you. You are with us on today's woman. COP USA Radio. I'll have you know that views expressed our own personal views in no way, shape, or form. Would that be the collective view of the Church of Pentecost? Kindly share our link and let it be a blessing. I see our man, uh, uh, Mr. Joshua Sepulchre. He said, mercy. This is unacceptable. Thank God for Christ Jesus, our Lord. God bless you. God bless you for being here. And Auntie Nanak was just a puma, always here with us. We love you. Thank you. She says, praise God. Wonderful mummies. Praise God to you. Auntie Charlotte Ajua Nyamicha is here. She says, wow. Amen. Amen. Oh, God bless you for being here. Auntie Sandra Usu, kisses to you. Thank you for always being here with us. She says, wow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Auntie Mary Chesa, thank you for being here with us. She says, Amen. Very powerful. Thanks for sharing more stories with Jenny Alpha. Our God reigns. That indeed was a powerful testimony. I see Auntie Stella Aferi is here. She says, Powerful testimony. Very, very true. God bless you. Auntie Quinise and Farley, she says, Hi, great women of God. Hello, hello, hello to you too. Auntie Margaret, Auntie Maggie, I said, No fear of me. She's here. She says, Praise the Lord, women of God. We thank God for another blessed Monday. It's good to see you all. Good to see you too. Thank you. And Auntie Quinista Father, she says, great testimony, Mama Doris. Very powerful, God bless you. And Auntie Charlotte Ajua Nyamicha, she says, we are liberated in the name of Jesus. Thank God for freedom, oxygen of the soul that needs to be invoked. God bless you for being here. The prophets in the house, other prophets are, Kwame Kitsi, a sergeant, he's also in the house. Bro, freedom, freedom, freedom. God bless you. And Auntie Linda Yero, she says, hmm, amen. God bless you, Mama, Mama Akosia. Very deep, truly deep. And Auntie Charlotte, at Jonia Richard, she says, amen. Thank you, Mama Doris. God bless you, God bless you. 
the prof has this to say. He says, the only course you can do is dance. Wow. Killer advice. Mm, bro. <laughs> The woman was trying to make her have a certificate or a degree in dondology or danceology. I don't even know which is which. But we from Africa, we don't even need degrees. We all have the degree already compared to us at best. <laughs> and to Mary Chester, she says, oppress him. God help him. And Dignes Gold, Alma, God bless you. She always does the best damn story. She says, have the liberty to speak up. God bless you. The prof says, People say, I am mad. Am I mad? So people don't know when they are in shackles, especially mental shackles. Thanks, mothers, for the eye opener. God bless you, bro. And then Auntie Linda says, amen. May God help us indeed so that we be free forever. God bless you, Mama Debbie. God bless you, too. And I see Big says, is in the house. Mrs. Benedicta Brookman and Jay says, she says, praise the Lord, glorious women of God. Thank you, sis. Always here with us. We appreciate you. Let us have your comments. Let us have your testimonies. And let us know where you're watching us from. Please like, love, and share. First day, Henrietta. Our mother, Debbie, says, the freedom to speak up. Doesn't matter where, even in the church. What do you have to weigh in on that? God bless you. Um, it's so true that... Um, a lot of times as um, believers, we can find ourselves shackled in situations. Um, and um, I believe that, you know, when we look at scripture alone, the Bible says that the truth shall set us free. But at the same time, there's a saying that says the truth hurts. So something that will set us free also hurts. So you have to know that there are um, consequences at to an extent um, for you being bold. But mm. I honestly believe that as children of God, um, we should stand on scripture mm -hmm. and we should pray for that strength from God for that boldness. Mm. If something isn't right, and it's not even limited to our church, but even in our homes, because a lot of people are shackled in their homes, but they mm. lack the boldness to be honest with themselves and to be honest with their situation and to say that this isn't right or I feel in bondage, or I feel limited, I feel restrained. And so because of that timidity, um, they live in it and they live and they're miserable. But um, we're talking about the ability to set ourselves free and to be unshackled. And it requires mm -hmm. boldness, boldness for you to be honest with yourself and mm -hmm. also to be honest with people around you. And it's important that, you know, when we talk about speaking the truth, though people don't like the truth, I think a lot of times the approach is important. Wisdom mm -hmm. is required when you are speaking the truth. You're not speaking the truth to insult someone or to demean someone or to make someone mm -hmm. feel as if they're inadequate or incapable in of doing their work. But mm -hmm. you're speaking the truth in wisdom and allowing the person to know that yes, this is what's going on. However, you know, with prayer and, and direction by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. I, I see that this would be a better way of going. Mm -hmm. And if the person takes it, praise God. If the person doesn't take it, praise God. You've done your part. Mm -hmm. That is just the one thing I know growing up, my mother always told us that, you know, my father-in-law, he's an advocate for speaking the truth. He always said that, you know, always speak the truth. That's what is important because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we're here to please God and not to please man. So mm -hmm. boldness is required of us, but boldness comes from the the Lord. And mm -hmm. for those of us who are timid, um, you know, we have to understand that God did not give us that spirit of timidity. No, but he's given us the spirit of power, of love and of self-control. He's also mm -hmm. given us the wisdom we need mm -hmm. to be able to express ourselves. And so for those of, our, those of us who are in shackles, be it in our homes, be yeah. it in our church, but whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. let us pray for the boldness to speak up. Let us not be comfortable in our situation. Not as, let us not accept it because accepting it leads to all of these restraints in which we're talking about mental, emotional shackles, depression. Um, it leads to so many things. And that's not what God has for us. Mm, mm, mm. God bless you so much. Boldness comes from God. First thing you join is Your remarks as well. The scope of the shackles, how to identify that you're in shackles and it's going to boldness if you can weigh in as well. Yeah, um, I just want to say thank you to our moms who's previously gave the comments. Um, one thing that I want to say about the shackles is that oftentimes when an individual is bounded or constrained, it creates a new norm for them. Mm -hmm. And that limits their understanding of that new environment that they're in, that they are in shackles mm -hmm. because they become comfortable 
in that environment. And I think one of our moms said that um, um, previously, but if you look at um, Israel, when God removed them from Egypt, from the bondage of slavery after years of bondage, and they were going in the wilderness, one thing after they came up to upon issues upon issues, they would say, oh, we wish that we were back into slavery. After years years of praying and praying that God will come and save them from from slavery. Now, because of me, they were saying that we wish we were back there. Uh And what we don't realize is that people that have been in shackles, especially for a prolonged period of time, do not or cannot easily adjust to a new norm. So sometimes even the shackled room or the confinement becomes even better for them than um, the the new freedom that they have received, especially when they are not with, they are not doing it or if they don't have the the word of God to help them, to aid them through that. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember... um, with their, in, in terms of defining people who knows if they were in their shackle, there was an example of this young lady who unfortunately her and her siblings were used um, as a token for her father when the father wanted money. Mm. And she was going to church through the grace of God. She found her husband and she was going through church. But when she was going through church, it was during one prayer meeting and she find herself repeating this word. I removed myself from underneath it. I removed mm-hmm. myself. Underneath. And then she would just kind of move her head back and forth. But she didn't know exactly what she was doing. Mm. So she, they returned one day to meet her dad and her dad said to the kids, um, at this point in time, there's not much I can do. But if any of you want to break the bondage that is that you're under, follow your sister's advice. Mm. And then she realized that what she was doing was that she was breaking the shackles that the father had placed upon them, which prevented them from prospering in life. And this Mm. was done when she came into God. So this tells us that when we come into Christ, even the things that we are unaware of, he makes it known to us. Mm. So we might be seem um, unaware of our limitation or the constraints that is put around us. But when we come to Christ, all things are revealed into him. And the thing about him is that he wants us to be free so wherever we are bound wherever we are confined wherever we are placed in a constraint he Mm -hmm. makes it known for us so that we are able to break away Mm -hmm. and then the little i want to add into the boldness if you read acts 4 if you Mm -hmm. read the verse 23 going the believers after they were they were um in prison they came back and they prayed to god and they said that to them that god you have heard um, or you have seen what they have done to us. Now give us the boldness to speak your word. Mm-hmm. And the Bible says that after that, signs and wonders followed, not just, they weren't able to just speak the word, but signs and wonders also followed their um, the, um, the gospel in which they were proclaiming. Mm-hmm. So when we are speaking the truth, the on filter truth of God. Uh, it doesn't matter how, um, um, who is trying to prevent us from speaking the truth. But once God has told us that this is what we need to share to people, as Mama Kusi said, we use the wisdom as Nathan did when he did, when he spoke the truth to David. But when we fail to do, we are rather creating an environment where people are continuing to live in a lie and not also become a certain form of constraint as well too. And we don't want to be an enabler in that sense so that's the little that i want to add god bless you so much god bless you so much you know mama abigail i'm just about to come to you but when you know first lady joyce Clinton was speaking i it came to my mind with this psychological terminology stockholm syndrome where you know the the kidnapped victims or the abused victims start to have this positive feeling towards the perpetrator so that even when they have an opportunity to break free now they they they, they, they such a sort of have this feeling towards the person that they started rather start to protect the abuser so when she was saying that people get very comfortable in that in that state of shackles that's what came to my mind where these people have an opportunity to run but now they are feeling very positive towards the perpetrator and they are not taking their advantage of, of it. We pray for grace. We pray for grace. Mama Abigail, I'm just going to come to you and we're going to look at how a person can free themselves. So if you like, can appropriate that liberty or the freedom. And I want to read Isaiah chapter 10, 27 from the King James Version. The Bible says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder 
and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So we want to look at practical ways to take off the shackles and to stay unshackled. Oh, thank you. And um, I'm so happy to hear all the things we have talked about being shackled mm. and the unshackling part. Now, for, for you to realize that you are shackled, one of us rightly said that some people do not even see that they are shackled. Mm -hmm. A lot depends on the exposure you've had. You see, if you were born into um, a, a particular environment, a particular culture, mm. and you have never gone out of it, and you have never read anything else, you don't have anything to compare that with. So you don't even know that there is something different from where you are that gives more freedom and, and takes away your limitation. Mm. So sometimes um, when people are shackled, it's not that they don't want to get out the, of the shackling, but they don't know that they are shackled because they don't know. Mm. Mm. It's, it's, not, it's not that they are being, in, um, they know it and they don't want to move out of it. Of course, mm -hmm. we have the battered women syndrome too. Mm -hmm. When you were talking about the southern syndrome, I was thinking about the battered women syndrome where somebody is abused to a level that the person begins to, um, to feel that it is her fault mm -hmm. that she's being abused. So she, she rightly expects it to come. All those are part of the shackle, um, the process of getting shackled. Mm. And you see, a lot of people um, who have been, who, who are in a shackle are there because the perpetrators were clever about it. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they went about like they were Father Christmas to them. Yeah. And so they are rather helping them and so they keep letting you realize that you are at their mercy. Mm -hmm. You need their benevolence to be able to come out of it. Mm -hmm. But we thank God for the Bible. Amen. The manual that God left for us. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus said, if the Son sets you free, you are free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There is only there is only one form of freedom that all of us can buy into and then get ourselves out of whatever shackles we are in. And um, when Nora Kosia talked about the teacher who told a child that the only thing she could do was dancing, it just brought to my mind that there are a lot of us who are in positions to say the right thing to people to get them unshackled. But sometimes we are the ones who put them into the shackles. Mm. If we are not careful with our pronouncement, mothers who are insulting their children and saying you will amount to nothing. Mm. In future, when it amounts to nothing, <laughs> you find <laughs> some great grandmother mm -hmm. who is a witch who has done something to the mm. child. So the things, the words that come out of our mouth, they are also very, very important. Now, when somebody is already chuckled, whether the person knows it or the person doesn't know it, the true way of getting out of it is the freedom in Christ. Amen. It is only Christ who gives the freedom for us to get out of whatever chuckles we are in whether it's mental, physical, spiritual, whatever. Mm -hmm. It is only Christ who gives us that freedom. Now, how do we get the Christ? You see, a lot of people have been born into the church and everybody assumes that they are Christian. Mm -hmm. Everybody assumes that they have accepted Christ, but they have not. Mm -hmm. And I, I even get a very worried for um, especially the children of people in responsible positions like pastors, elders, and deaconesses, 
some of the things that go on when we, we meet them in school and we find out some of the things which have gone on, you are shocked because right under the noses of their parents, certain things have been going on that the parents have never known. Mm. We're too busy. We are too busy not paying attention to the shackles that our children are in. Mm. It is up to us, every parent listening to my voice today, please, don't assume that your child, your child has accepted Christ. When you go home or wherever you are, sit your children down and find out. Sit, I mean, openly ask, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Mm. And if they say yes, ask them, what does it mean? Mm. Let them explain to you. If the person has really accepted Christ as his or her personal savior, the explanation he or she will give you with the help of the Holy Spirit, you will know whether it is the truth or not. And a lot of them are shy to come out when you go to church and they ask for people to come forward to accept Christ. They can accept Christ in the home, wherever. So that the first step is the salvation. Mm. Salvation is what takes us out of the shackles. Okay. And then we have to let people dwell on the word of God. Mm. Because all these truths that we have been talking about, they are found in the word of God, the manual that Christ left for us. That's right. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Mm. Stand firm then and do not allow yourself to be burdened That's right. by the yoke of slavery. That is in Galatians 5 verse 1. Mm. It is the freedom that is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So when you start reading the word of God, you find out, you find the answers in the word of God. And then you are able to stand on the word of God and pray and get yourself unshackled. We have talked a lot about mental shackles. Mm -hmm. And those ones, because of the things that are going on in our minds and what we are thinking, we think that this is how we are. Just today, I was talking to a young um, lady and she was like, this is what my mom said about me. And I said, so what do you think about it for yourself? She said, I don't agree, but that's my mom. And I was very sad. Mm -hmm. Because, the, I, and then I had to, there is this thin line between, yes, she's your mom. You are supposed to obey your parents, but then, if what the person is telling you is against what God is saying about you, yeah. you don't have to accept it. Yeah. And how do I get the mother to, to realize that forcing your opinion down the throat of your child is not the right thing, but let's teach her to go the Christian way, to go the godly way, to and ask her maker. You see, when um, God said to Jeremiah, when you were a clot of blood in your mother's womb, I had already ordained you mm. to be a prophet. So as I'm sitting here, who I am is already accomplished. Amen. And as you are there, whatever God intended you to be, is already accomplished. It's a matter of going through the word of God and listening to God, obeying God, to become that thing which you are. Because God has already ordained you as a certain personality. Mm. That is how he has created you. And so that one is what needs to come out. Now, without learning from the creator who is God, without following his steps, without going in, then you will mm. not know what you are supposed to become. A lot of us buy things and there's a manual on it. We don't read the manual. <laughs> the things, the things that what it can accomplish. Mm -hmm. I remember I one time I was looking for something and then my son came and he said, so what is your phone for? And I said, what do you mean by what's my phone? For? He said, this thing that you're struggling with your pen and paper, you can quickly get it on the phone. I said, how do you mean? He said, mommy, did you read your manual? And I said, no. I mean, whoever has time to sit down and read all the details <laughs> about what the phone can do, nobody does it. I mean, 
<laughs> like, well, if you are doing, he opened it and then black and white, here it is. Oh, oh, okay. So, oh, okay. I can. And then I, the same way, the word of God is a manual that unshackles us. Amen. The enemy does not want us to be free. Yeah. He wants to take our freedom away from us because when you are free, you are able to accomplish a lot. Yes. And because of that, he, he's making us run away from the manual that God has put all the information in for us. So I would say that for us to be unshackled, first, accept Christ. Second, go according to the word of God. And what the word tells you to do, go according to it and you shall be truly amen 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 and thank god that you know right here if you can tell from Presley doris you know that she has on that we are just celebrating independence day it started you know yesterday you should have heard all the you know the knockouts the noise the you know stuff like the lights going off and all that we are celebrating independence day right here in the united states saying that you know you're supposed to be free we are commemorating the declaration. We are saying, if a nation can declare freedom, I'm going say the Bible has already shown us that Christ has already made us free. And he, I love the scripture, that he has made us free already. So we shouldn't allow anybody to, you know, shackle us again. Mama, Doris, I'm about to come to you. But Mama, Abigail, when you were speaking, it reminded me of something that, you know, somebody told me that she had, you know, something with her aunt. She, she was staying with her aunt because her mom had traveled. And something that the aunt told her to do, it wasn't a big deal. And then the auntie was upset with her and said, this is your, your behavior. So by, you know, I'm trying to, you know, translate what she told me. He said, this behavior, the minute we take you to your husband's house, as soon as we shut the door, he will return you. She said, I reject it. I refuse it. And the aunt rather got offended. Now call for a meeting that the girl needs to apologize. She said, you, are, you told me something. And I, from the way I heard it, my spirit told me I needed to rebuke it in Jesus' name. And now if you feel offended. What about me that you think I won't amount to anything in my husband's house? So mommy, God bless you for letting us know. Christ has freed us. We shouldn't allow anybody to put us in a shackle. More doors, if you could look at ways also for us to stay unshackled. Okay, so um, I I, I always want to use this uh, prodigal son mm. as somebody who really liberated himself. Okay, and for me, he did something. He did a correct assessment of the situation. Mm. He sat down and looked at the way. You know, he's a rich man's son. Yeah. And he knew where he, he was supposed to be, or he knew wh where he was. And he, he knew what he had done to himself by taking some of the property and misused it. And mm -hmm. that has brought him to this situation. Mm -hmm. But thank God, he one day sat there and said, Ah, what am I doing to myself? I have a lot of these things. It is this and this and this and this is what I did. Mm. So he did a good assessment, accepted the challenge that what I did was bad. Mm. How can I correct it? Go back to my father, plead with him, humble myself, correct my errors, and then start from there. Mm. So the first thing that we have to do all to come out of our shackle is do an assessment of your soul. Okay. If you are not maximizing your potential, you know where you can get to. But for some reason, you are not getting there. Know that you are under bondage. If you are afraid to do a particular thing, anytime you want to go to school, hey, I'm afraid of, <laughs> hey, you see, the last time I did the, the mass, I feel, I remember when <laughs> I wrote my whole album. Everything was okay. And I had seven in math. And when I came, my father was so much surprised. I could swap ball. Mass also went to the entry. He registered me. I went for classes. I was saved. But the day that I was going to write the math, hey, I was so much afraid. <laughs> I was so scared. And I, a friend said, I ah, do it. But you can do it. Why write it and you can do it? You see? So sometimes we are, there are things that we have to do to overcome 
our fears. We are afraid to do it. So we hide behind certain things and we give excuses. If you are going through that situation, be bold and mm -hmm. go through it. I mm -hmm. wrote the math and I was okay. So you see, and another thing is that some of these things are spiritual. Hey, mm -hmm. We are Christians. Some of these things are spiritual and you need to pray. Mm. You need to fast. That one, it is not a country. It is a muadedi. The difference is that... <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> yes. A country is six to six. A country is happy. This is a muadedi. You start from um, maybe Wednesday. You will not eat. You will not drink. Apostle Jima calls it air and what? For air and prayer. You will convey your way through. Because some of the things you see are so in-depth that you may not be aware of it. Your ancestors have done it. Mm -hmm. It was when my mommy died that I, 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 and they were pouring their libation and understood certain things that my mommy was telling me. This is something that no fault of mine because I'm from that a place. You need to wrestle it mm -hmm. and take yourself out of it. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in one say forever say. There are things you have to contend with, fight mm -hmm. with. Jacob saw it. Mm -hmm. Jacob saw that this thing that is happening to me, Jacob, I cannot run away from it. I have seen an angel of the Lord. I will fight with him till he changes it. One verse he blesses. The blessing that if, if you read uh, the history about it, he wanted a change. He mm -hmm. was fed up with the Azan life and all those mm -hmm. lights and taking things from people. He wanted the right life. Mm -hmm. If you are a Christian and you are listening to us and you've gone through this shackle, we unshackle you, every deliverance you fall, you wake up and you go back to the old thing. My sister, find a place. Go and share and stop eating. Close your mouth and your stomach. Oh, and pray and seek the face of God to come out of it. Mm -hmm. People will sit there and say, hey, if you, dear, baby, I worry, I would, dear, I was so you have to give birth. Amen. And say that, and as for our house, you have to give birth to one before. Who said that? Which Bible quotation supports that? It is mm -hmm. not true. You need to change it. Mm -hmm. I remember when I got married, I, I stayed in a certain house with my husband. And you know, I'm the only daughter, so I wanted a girl. But my husband is an equipping man, so he wanted a boy. So mm -hmm. we prayed. The first, the first son came. They were happy. Then I got pregnant again, and they started. This one too will be a boy. Let me see this one. I, I did it. You see, sometimes the confrontations that we make is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you ask me, there are times that I've confronted certain issues physically. If I had known certain things, I wouldn't have done it. Mm. The thing is neology. Go down on your knees. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual something that you are breaking. And you mm. don't break it physically by fighting individuals. Mm. <laughs> Principalities and demons are there. You need to break through. So when they tell me you give birth to a boy, I just get inside and I open my belly. I say, whoever is there, if you are a boy, go change into a girl. I'm giving birth to a girl. And I made it nine months. I can't remember the number of times I did it in a day. But any time I had it, I renounced it and renounced it. And I didn't invite anybody. I wasn't annoyed. When they say I smile, when I get, I say, hey, blood of Jesus, turn this thing in. I want a girl. I gave birth to a girl. I have, I gave birth to a girl. And ever since everybody who stayed in the house, I have that testimony, gives birth to a girl. Hey, there are certain things with your It is prayer that you need. That is what the Tetefon called and you pray and you break it and your ancestors, all of them will go through. So please, if you see that anytime you want to make advancement in life, certain things comes in. People get jobs and when they are going for the interview, the day that they will be going, that day, 
go and pray, pray, seek help. If you want, I, I read Papa Hagen's book, one of the books, he said, if you have prayed and prayed and it's not going, seek help. That's why we need to have these brethren coming together to pray for you. We should be there for one another. There should be somebody that when you have a problem, you call, Sister Gitti, this is my problem. Pray with me and mm -hmm. prayer works. Amen. Pray. It works like Amen. something. Amen. It works. So you should pray. I had this daughter and, mm -hmm. and, and in their home, they don't give birth to males. And she was able to give birth to a firstborn son. And the doctors were talking biology plenty. Me, I didn't do biology. So one day she called me and said, mommy, the doctors said me, all that you're saying, I don't know. But all that I know is that our God can change every situation. Do you mm -hmm. believe in prayer? She said, yeah, I went home with the, uh, no, no, I also didn't go with me. I went home alone and we closed the door. We prayed them, prayed them, prayed them, prayed them, prayed. She went to the hospital that the son was okay. And she said, when she got pregnant, she was so scared because of that thing that had been said in their home. And when she did the scan, they said she was going to give birth to a son. Yay! Then maybe, oh, no, I want a girl. I say, you give birth to a son. That son will live. We serve a living God. The Bible says there is everything. His divine nature has given us everything. You leave the sovereignty of God aside. Yes. Sometimes we pray in his own sovereignty. He knows how to answer it. Mm -hmm. No one will. But once you leave the sovereignty, as the word of God is as potent, as active, as powerful as anything. Mm -hmm. We prayed and she gave birth to a second son and the, both of them are doing very well. Mm -hmm. So these are the ways that you have to do it. Identify the problem, accept the challenge, Work at it properly. Look for the correct verses from the word of God. Write them. Sometimes we are lazy. Oh, oh, if it's laziness that is killing Christians. So write them. Mama Eunice Addison of Blessed Memory, she taught me one thing when I became so for mommy. She said, as for her, when she has a problem, she writes everything and she will paste it on her wall. And she will go and stand there. And you are some said that they should say it and say it and say it and say mm -hmm. appropriate the word of God. Mm -hmm. If it's your child who is not doing well, the Bible didn't say that. Change it. Don't listen to all that people are saying. It is you who have the mandate. So say the word, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst men. So as you say it, the word will come and dwell with you. Don't be discouraged. Sometimes when we pray uh, today. You did the six to six. You didn't see anything tomorrow. Oh, God has not loved me and God has given up on me. No, 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 no. Some of these things, it gives you spiritual macho. Before you become uh, the Benny Hins, ask them. The, the, the exercises, the faith exercise, it builds your faith. So continue to do it. If it is one year, you continue. Pray. Say the words. And as you say them, you come out of it. Beloved, we serve a living God, a father, of course, who is up there, who has given us everything. Moses, God has given you everything. Mm. You've seen the Red Sea. Hey, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to well, me, you're about to make me sing that song that Pastor doesn't believe that I, I had. You're about to make me sing that song. <laughs> so you see, all that I'm saying is that God is there waiting mm. for you to act. Mm. Can you say, Moses, what do you have? The stick was with Moses. It wasn't with God. Mm. But if you want, I forgot one, one verse the day that I read. It said, when the, the sea saw God, they rode back. Moses mm. was the one who lifted the rod, but it was God who did it. Mm. Sometimes we need faith, great faith, mm. 
to go through some of these things. I know what I'm talking about. Aunt Abigail knows it. I have fought battles. It has not been easy. But I believe you, me, prayer works. Yeah. Just yeah. believe in God. Sometimes to pray, if you pray and pray and pray and you see that it's not pushing, switch on to praise and worship. Worship God. Sing the song. Peter and, uh, and John. Where it is now, dear, Ayaka. But they chose to praise the living God and he intervened. So all that I'm saying is that if you need help to seek help, seek help. Sometimes it is good to seek help, but talk to the right people. Talk to the right, you know the people that can help you. I love Mary for that. When the angel told her all those long grammar and she didn't understand, you get pregnant, Virgin Mary, she went to Elizabeth. And Mama Elizabeth did a good job. Even as we, 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 we preach, as, even as we go through the journey of Christianity, mm. there are things that are difficult, but I love what the angel said. Well, see, with man, it is impossible, mm -hmm. but with God, all mm -hmm. things are possible. So everybody can come out of what he or she is going through, but you have to do it the right way and you get the right result. He say, ask and I'll do it so that your joy will be full. May our joy in the Lord be full. Amen. 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 Very, very powerful. I think that the, the, this is where the conversation, we, ha we have to even come back in and continue it. I'm just going to acknowledge people and I'll come to our mothers who look at seeking help and the, the subsequent points will, it has to be uh, another time. Very, very powerful. Just listening to you, mommy. Uh, Psalm 114, I mean, on there because mommy, you referenced it. Uh, the Bible said, verse three, the sea saw it and fled. The Jordan mm. was driven back. The mountains mm. kicked like rams. The little hills like yeah. lambs. Mm. Ye mountains, I mean six, that ye skip like mm. rams, ye little hills like lambs, tremble mm. thou earth at the mm. presence of the Lord, at mm. the presence of God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of waters. God bless mm. you so much, mommy. God is so powerful. God is so powerful. And I was also thinking about something. You, 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 you said something and you said, with man, it's impossible, but with God, it's not impossible. And you also referenced that some things are not just physical. They, they are more than you know, spiritual. It reminded me of how the disciples were brought this. I mean, the book of Matthew chapter seven, perhaps I just have to not paraphrase and just read it. And they couldn't handle it. And then it came to Jesus and Jesus told them exactly what mommy you said in verse 21 of Matthew chapter 17. And I just might go there and just read it. So when you go to the book of Matthew chapter 17, verse 15, these people, uh, the person come, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. And I always Go back to the scripture because I know uh, in, 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 a, in an environment that I work that there are protocols to treat, you know, people that have seizures, like active seizures. So it's as medical as can be, as medical as this condition can be. And every nurse would tell you the physical protocols they would take if somebody, Mama Abby goes here, if somebody was to be seizing right here. But Jesus says something, and Mama Doris, you referenced it. And, and one thing that amazes me in verse 15, and the, guy, the, the, the father of the guy says, he often falls into the fire or into the water. So I'm thinking, why is that episode waiting for water and fire only? And then 16 says, so I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't hear him. And then Jesus says it. He says, you don't have enough faith. Verse 20. I tell you the truth, if you have faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. And then you, 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 you listen to that, and then I go to the verse 21, and it says, this kind 
this kind. I, I like that version that's specified. The yeah, New King James Version is the version that says, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. And so, yes, there are different kinds of seizures and you know, season episodes and stuff like that. But Jesus was trying to tell them those people had their bellies full. That's why they couldn't tackle that one because this was a different kind. So, Mumodor, God bless you for you really, really speaking to that situation. I want to acknowledge my people. And Mumodor, you mentioned something about libation. I want to tell you what somebody told me that they went to a certain function and for them they thought they're free they've come to christ so they're okay but they went to family gathering and a family function and as the people were pouring libation they thought it has nothing to do with me they are doing their things i'm not part of it but something struck them and what struck them was as the person was making the libation they started to go from heads of families and connect everyone. So if they mention Ajua, she thought, I'm not part of it, but no, they mentioned Ajua and then Ajua and her daughters and sons. They mentioned, so they're going hierarchical according to the lineages. And as they mentioned Ajua, Ajua and her sons, Kwesi, Kwesi and his sons. So there the Holy Spirit reminded her that you need to be wise about this. So first lady just comes in that testimony that you shared where somebody actively had to say, I remove myself from this. As Christians, sometimes when we pray, we don't know what God does. And that is why even those who are baptized with the language of the spirit, the Bible says we do not know how to but the Holy Spirit, he intercedes with groanings on our behalf. And I do believe that as we are speaking the language of the Spirit, all these people who are mentioning our names, linking us to certain people and pouring and making libation on our behalf, the Holy Spirit is interceding and taking us out of those associations. Amen. Amen. God bless you. So I see so many comments here. And to rejoice says, break every yoke with prayers. Amen. Uncle Joshua Stekopar, he says, and yet is you, mommy. Even when we are liberated, we fall in love with the shackles. Mercy, mercy, mercy. And Auntie Nanako, she said, I J Elder, Josh. So let me see. Auntie Gracie Frimpon, she says, good evening from Dansuman Accra. God bless you so much. Thank you. First lady, Dara, I see you laughing. Uncle Joshua said, wow, this topic is deep. I just learned from what you were all discussing, mental shackles. I went outside and came back wearing my mask inside my house for about 30 minutes without realizing it. <laughs> Mercy. Mercy and grace. Auntie Mary Chase Sash says, I love that. A manual to unshackle us. Thanks, Mama Abby, talking about the Bible. Mrs. Sandra Kumi Mills, she said, exactly. Sometimes we want to live in the opinion of others just to be accepted. The word of God is our manual. So Mama Abby, go there. Loving what you said. Auntie Stella Ferry, she says, the, the evil one will first capture or steal your mind and spirit. They put people in bonding, manipulate, or oppress them due to their selfishness. Those who are held captives are not spiritually aware of what is going on unless God comes in. As in John 10.10, 10, Riley said, yes, the enemy comes, he seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. God bless you for looking at it. And Auntie Mary Chase says, why can't we speak up as, Christian, as Christ has set us free? Very deep. God bless you so much. And uh, Mrs. Uh, Benita Rookman's God let's just say what okay let me move on to other comments that i'm looking at so many comments thank you it's good to see all of that in here and then auntie um stella a fairy she said yes that is very true inheritor shackles they are there we need to break them amen in jesus name i love to always say the bible says in the beginning god so it's good to just trace your beginning from God. Amen. Amen. Auntie um, Benedicta Brookman, AJ, she said, God bless you, Mama. There is a revelation revealed by you. God bless you. And she said, This is from God. 
God bless you. Amen. Auntie Pray, um, she says, prayer is the key. Auntie Mary and Young. Thank you. Prayer is the master key indeed. And then Auntie Rejoice said, awesome testimonies, Momo Doris. Auntie Monica also says, she says, God bless you, Momo Doris. God bless you too. My dearest, dearest husband is here. He says, thank you, Momo Doris, for the practical application of the word. I wonder what credit hour this is. <laughs> Now they are giving credit hours to every episode. <laughs> Auntie Stella says, God bless you. And Auntie Sandra also said, thanks, Mama Doris. You have really lectured us. So today, mommy, your professional title is on, on the house. Auntie Mary said, powerful, Mama Doris, fire. Auntie Georgina Asafoe J, she says, God, continue to bless you, mommy. Amen. God bless you, too. Auntie Anastina Taylor is here. She says, great, very practical, Mama Doris. God bless you. Prayer moves mountains, our powerful weapons. That is Auntie Stella Afferi. Digna Stella Day of PLWC New York is here. She says, thank you, women of God. Prayer really works. Mama Doris, God bless you. Dignity Stella, God bless you and love to all the day. My dearest husband comes back to say, wow, this discussion makes me want to climb Mountain Camel with Elijah. Odi, fire Kodi. <laughs> and then I, first thing you do, I say, hey, Sofu, I beg, let the anointing calm down. And then he says, okay, first thing you are here. I see Auntie Helen Brony. God bless you. Dignas at opinions here. God bless you so much for being here. And all of you, we appreciate you. So, you know, this prophet, before he he he, he will start to shankom, he, he will stand, first of all, he has to stand on a, a, a chair so that he will get elevation. And they start to shout, oh, D, Fayoko D. Before he will prophesy, they have to always say that before he'll take that D. Mama Debbie, if you can wait and ask, you know, we're about to wrap up this conversation. We cannot exhaust it in this episode. So we are looking at what our mothers have said, how to be unshackled, practical ways to stay unshackled, the behavioral lifestyle and devotional bonds, if you can wait in as well. Okay. Yeah, thank you so very much, our moms. And you have really hit the nail on the head by saying that it is Christ. Mm. That is where our liberty comes from. Amen. It is Christ. You know, and, and, and also, like you said, if you don't know that you have a problem, you may walk through it. I, there was something I read to do with an elephant, which is elephants are normally like they said, 1,600 pounds. Mm. And in a circus, you find that they said the elephants were being tied with just a small string. And then they asked, they said, ah, how are you able to? These elephants could just move themselves and then they would go. And then the people who trained them said, no, what we did was that right from the beginning, when they were small, mm. was when we tied those strings on their legs. Mm -hmm. So from when they were small, they couldn't move to free themselves. So now that they are big enough, even though they can move, but because the conditioning of the mind is that, you know, uh, I mean, we, we are locked up, mm -hmm. they continue to remain that way. Mm. So our mindset plays a key part in our getting that relief. Christ's word is there. He has said so many things. And, you know, sometimes even for me personally, I would ask myself, and I was reading today this research, I'm telling you, I'm really, really blessed. And then it raised a very important point that people who have wandering minds, mm. because I'm people, attention, when I was young, I wouldn't sit still, mm. attention deficit. And when you are old too, so sometimes those things play a part. Those who have wandering minds, you are sitting there and their minds are wandering and stuff. Those people sometimes find it very easy sometimes to become anxious, to become fearful, to become disturbed about so many things. So first, you've got to war with your mind. Mm. May God mm. help us so that we will war with the mind we have. Because everybody's mm. mind is different. You know, some people, you know, there are many things they can pay attention and focus. And then when they focus, they are able to get, I'm going to do this. I'm going to read the word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do this. And it, it just flows for them because they are determined. Meanwhile, there are some of us whose minds wander a bit and stuff like that. So sometimes you say, I'm going to do this. You have to force your mind. You battle with your mind so that your mind will rest and stay on the word of God. 
may God help us because not everybody is the same, but may God help us so that we will recognize that the word has weight. Mm. When the troubles come, it is the word with prayer that makes the difference. Amen. Is the word. Mm. He said he has exalted his word above his own name. So may we hold on to that word. I see that I'm sinking, but Lord, your word said this. May that word come to pass in my life. When we do that, we hold on to the word. And then when we shake off the fears, if the word is greater than our fears, it will also allow us to be able to release ourselves so that the shackles can be broken. And mm. our mom said, he said, when you find that it is getting to a point where you can't do anything, seek help. Mm. Let us not stay in it and say it is okay. Let us seek help. And when we seek help, God will come in. Amen. With prayer, with fasting, with uh, rejoicing. And sometimes let us dance. When the music is coming on, let us shake off the shackles by dancing, like you said. Shake mm -hmm. off the shackles so I can yes. dance. Yes. Let us dance for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. And then we will see that these shackles will be broken. We will receive our liberty in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You know, mommy, when you were talking, I remember something from psychology where they call it classical conditioning. And this uh, Russian psychologist, Mama Abigail, I'm sure you, you might be able to speak more into it, you know, did this where he he did this um, stimulus, right? We, we were talking about the elephant episode where that with time, by the ringing of a bell, the dogs will salivate in response to the anticipation. So he was able to condition their minds where they asked to say the ringing of the bell with, and I do remember that when we were kids, you know, sometimes church would take us to um, uh, youth camp. And one of our teachers eventually, uh, Big Sis, um, Mrs. Benedict of Rukmane, Jay might remember, we used to call him Yekodi because uh, when they ring the bell, King, King, then everybody would say Yekodi. And, even after that conference, <laughs> somehow that became his nickname. So somehow we had associated him with that nickname. And our mommy was using that thing. How could they do that with an elephant? Because from the onset, they set the tone for him. And certain things have become triggers. Mama, uh, Mama uh, Debbie, God bless you, because I was beginning to think about it. And that, that's why the Bible says that we put into subjection anything that wants to elevate itself above the word of God. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. I'm going to take First Lady Henrietta, First Lady Joyce Clemson, First Lady Dora. I'm going to take what you have to say and you're closing at the same time. So Mrs. Joyce Clemson, if you want to come in, even as our mommies have, mommies have spoken so much about the practical ways, the behavior, the seeking of help aspect of it, if you want to weigh in as well, you can give us your clothes and this conversation will be continued again, God willing, next week. This is, it's, it's coming across that if we're not careful, we'll rush through it, but it's very deep and there's so much we are learning. Yes, so first lady Joyce, if you can. Uh, give us what your, your, your feeling you wanted to add in your closing as well. Thank you once again. Um, and I, I've learned a lot from what our mom has said as well too. Um, the little that I want to add is the fact that um, what Mama Doris said, and I think Mama Debbie also hit on it, is the health aspect. Sometimes when people are in shackles, um, as we said, even when they find that they're in shackles and they're unable to break it, they will seek help. But there's that fear of being ostracized. And I'm talking about in shackles where maybe they're in shackles because of their sinful nature. Maybe they are drawn to a certain behavior that they cannot break from. Mm -hmm. It was a story of this young girl who unfortunately, I think it was through her grandmother or someone in the family that gave her something. And she was confessing and she was saying that no matter where she is, no matter who she is, if a guy calls her, she has to go sleep with him. And you slept with guys just for something as simple as maybe a dollar, you know, and it's not, it's impulsive. She can't control it. Um, and when this behavior first started, there was this sort of, they, everybody looked down upon her 
mm-hmm. rather than stepping in to help. There was this ostracize that they placed upon her. They mm-hmm. couldn't. Her. They made her feel inadequate and mm-hmm. did not provide the help that she needed. Mm-hmm. But in reading and acts that you provided, what we saw was that when Harold imprisoned Peter, mm-hmm. we saw that the church was praying. That's because right. Sometimes in a person's behavior, they are unable to do it, as our mom said, and even what you said. So we, as the believers, the faith, the ones that are around them, are supposed to pray. Mm-hmm. It's to condemn and to look upon people's behavior, especially when you don't understand that there is a force that is causing them to, to behave in that manner. Or right. if you haven't been in a situation where you've been shackled before, it's easy for you to judge people. Mm-hmm. You might be someone that who maybe has was drinking and has stopped drinking and then unfortunately um, goes back again. And then your first thing would be, oh, you know, you, that's all you know, or you're, you're just, you can't amount to anything. And you add on to it, not realizing that there was a force and a, a, a spirit behind it. And that individual needs our prayer. Mm-hmm. So um, I think the little that I want to add to what our mom has beautifully said um, is that we as people of faith should lift up one another, bear one another in prayer because because as the church was able to pray and through that Peter and um, Peter was able to be released from the prison, then we are also in that position to also be able to help other people break from their shackles, mm-hmm. even when they, their strength is not enough. Mm-hmm. Um, so we need to be cognizant of that and not spew so much ridicule and judgment onto others. Thank you. Once again. God bless you so much for calling all of us from behind the scenes to go ahead and and pray and firstly Joyce because you said this I I want to bring this as well because I'm thinking about something and we might need to pray more I do remember somebody sharing this testimony that growing up her one of the I don't want to you know say who told her that as for this family when we tell a man we want him he shouldn't say no so the minute like, you know, it, it's a challenge. And so it, the minute you resist, she will be disciplined if she's not able to come and add you to the conquest list. And it's like they use it to pride themselves that no man is able to say no to them. So whatever they need to do to pursue you and win you, because there she's bringing the title down. And I thought that was very outrageous. I couldn't imagine that this is a conquest to be celebrated. But these are some of the shackles that are going on, the things that people are taking pride in. So God bless you for calling all of us that instead of ostracizing, we should pray. God bless you so much. First lady, Dara, we'll take your closing and your mask as well. All right, thank you so much. I believe a lot has been said. What I want to add to that is that um, we should always always remember that the thoughts and inclinations of our heart mm. um, shapes the reality of who we are. Okay. And also it, it shapes how we think mm-hmm. and ultimately how we act. Mm. Uh, Mama Abby talked about salvation. Mm. And to add to that, you know, scripture says in John 8, 32, that you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Um, you know, God, God it, we can be set free through mm. the, the truth of Christ. Amen. When you know scriptures, nobody can come and deceive you. Yeah. You know, nobody can come and tell you that, let me take a shower and then come <laughs> and use it to take you know, to bathe. And that is how you're going to be healed or whatever. So mm. it's about seeking and knowing the word of God. Mm. Also, God can bring people our way to help us stay unshackled or yeah. to unshackle us. Um, he did that with the people of Israel mm-hmm. when he sent uh, Moses to go, to go deliver them. Mm. And there are times when they come in the form of pastors or leaders or, or mentors. So uh, you need to avail um, yourself. Seek help when you know that something is not right. When you can tell that things keep getting worse and worse and worse. Mm-hmm it is time to seek help. Don't be afraid to seek help. And Mm -hmm. lastly, I just want to say that um, have people to hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't surround yourself with people who only praise you. And so (laughs) when when we give you advice, take it. You know, sometimes you put yourself in positions where people cannot tell you the truth. You put um, shackles on them, you know, and a good example that comes to mind is David. Mm. When he was seeking to sleep with Bathsheba, if he had surrounded himself with people that were bold enough to tell him the truth, when mm. he was asking about somebody's wife, they could have told my king, 
you know, I mean, he, he, he's, she's somebody's wife. Don't cry, Becky. Yeah. You, know, you have so many women, you know, to yourself. Why this one? But nobody could say anything. You know, then he went further after sleeping with her to give that letter to, to, to be sent to Uriah to, um, um, to yeah. be sent to, uh, to get Uriah killed. Mm -hmm. When that letter was sent, you know, when he opened it and read it, he could have said, oh, no, 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 King, we can't do this. I mean, this is not right. Mm -hmm. Get somebody killed for, for, for his wife. But they could not tell David the truth mm -hmm. until whatever happened, happened. You know, as, as people, let us surround ourselves with people that will be bold to tell you the truth. So for me, I really said it. The truth sets us free, but sometimes it hurts. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it hurts does not mean that surround yourself with only people that will who hail praises are you, you will sing. So it is good that we take in, we, we have people that will hold us accountable so that when we are doing things that are not right, they'll be able to tell us that, hey, where you are going is not right. And I believe when, as we do that, uh, it will help us to stay unshackled. God bless us all. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. So Mrs. Danako, she said, thank you firstly, Dora. Take counsel in good faith. And I see Queen Stefali, she says, great point, Mama Dora. Allow yourself to be advised and also be ready to take and ponder on good advice. And Auntie Mary Chase, I, I always say, you don't know how it feels when you are not in a present situation, so don't judge, but help in prayer. God bless you, Mama Kumsen. Great revelation. And Auntie Linda says, oh, yes, we will. And Auntie Monica also says, dance so that the shackles come off. God bless you, Mama Debbie. And this is when AJ is remembering our Sunday school teacher is Teacher Sam. God bless you. Auntie Ellen Sanu, she says, may the word of God be, uh, be greater then our fears. Amen, amen. And Auntie Mary Chesa says, may we hold on to the word and prayer to break the shackles. We will sing and dance to liberation in Jesus' name. God bless all our mamas. This is where, you know, we need a white handkerchief as well. And Auntie Momodora says here, she says, amen. May God bless us. It is really in Christ. My area first lady, Mama Debbie, God bless you. I love you bunch. So Mama Debbie, Love going out to you. And Auntie Ellen Sonu, she said, yes, our liberty is in Christ. And my dearest husband says, Chai, we break all elephant syndrome in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. It's beautiful. And first lady, Dora, okay, good. It says, uh, the anointing. It's awesome. And Elder Joshua, um, Joshua Sokope, he says, the truth sets us free, but it can hurt as well. But we have to embrace it to be free or resist it and still be in our bondage. God bless Mumodara. God bless you all. Very great people in the chat room. God bless you all. And kindly share so that it will bless people. And I just want to say thank you. Uh, when he said the truth hurts, you know, it's so interesting. Today, I want to bring Bob Marley here. He says, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. I don't want to go into that somebody, that was all they would always say. Least things to say, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. God bless you, God bless you. All right, first lady Henrietta. God bless you. I, I have been so blessed today from this discussion. And the little I would just want to add is that when, you know, as we spoke about um, shackles and how it is bondage and how it is, um, it enslaves you as an individual. And as children of God, we know that we are no longer slaves. And it is something that the enemy tries to bring forth in our lives. And so it is important for us um, to, like our mothers have said, we should break ourselves out of such bondage. Mm. Um, and it it's easy for the enemy to try to, in, to manipulate us to think that our situations, our bondages are normal. Um, but we know as children of God what is not normal mm -hmm. and we shouldn't be comfortable in our situations. And uh, one thing I also want to add when it comes to seeking help, because we're in an era in, um, in the world that we're in that people, um, because of the 
our mother said it earlier, some what laziness, we'd rather put the burden of the help seeking in someone else's hands while we sit back. And so we have instances where people go and they give people money to pray for them. Uh, they give people cars to intercede for them. But I just want us, I want to encourage those of us who are listening, that it is our shackles for us to set ourselves free from. And it's not something that someone else can do for you. Uh, when we talk about setting ourselves free from shackles, it requires you to build yourself spiritually and know who you are mm -hmm. in Christ, knowing that you are not a slave to your situation and you're not a slave to your circumstance. And so when mm -hmm. you have that confidence um, by building yourself spiritually, then you are able to set yourself free. So I just want to encourage all of us who are listening and just continue to encourage that God is in control and God is in our situations That's and we should right. just allow him to strengthen us, to build us up and to help us to be set free from any bondage in which we are in. So may God bless us all once more. Amen. Amen. God is in our situation. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. More Margaret Ofori. Yes. We want to thank the Lord very much for all that we have had to do. He has very educated. And what I also want to say is when you read Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, the 23 to the 36, it said something very interesting over there. There are dimensions of bondages. All bondages are not the same. Mm -hmm. You see, first, they were flogged. Mm -hmm. And then they were thrown into prison. Mm -hmm. And from there, they were put into the inner cell. And mm -hmm. when they went into the inner cell, they were also bound in chains. So it's from one problem to another, to another, to another, to another. But the good news is, no matter what your bondage is, Mm. There is hope. Amen. There is assurance. That's right. John 11, 38 to 34 says, you see, when, when Martha, the, 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 the brother of Martha died for four days, it was so stinky. It was so bad. Mm. But the Lord Jesus made a proclamation that, that when you believe, mm. all things are possible. Mm. So if you are out there and you are listening to us, it doesn't matter what your struggles are, your bondages are, your challenges, or whatever that you are going through. Just believe. Hold on unto the Lord Jesus, for he's the perfecter of our faith. He's able to do and do it exceedingly more and abundantly. And then even as we are also seeking for help, one thing I want to tell our listeners is that seek for the appropriate help. Because sometimes your situation can be from frying pan to fire. Mm. If you don't get the appropriate help, you go to the wrong person, get the wrong information, you will never get to your destination. And sometimes too, if you want to get out of your bondage, you also have to discipline yourselves. For example, when it comes to weight loss, that is the book I'm writing about. Mm -hmm. There are certain food after 40, you cannot enjoy them anymore. Mm -hmm. No matter how good it tastes, mm. you have to change your lifestyle. Mm. You have to eliminate some things out of your diet. Mm. You have to do certain things so that you can get the body that the Lord wants you to be. Mm -hmm. So it comes, you have sometimes you have to discipline. It comes to discipline mm. so that you'll be free from whatever that is choking you or whatever bondage. And so I want to tell our listeners, and especially our young ladies, sometimes you want a child. You go to the doctor, they'll check, they'll say everything is fine, blah, 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 blah. But no matter what you do, I want to tell them you have to change. Wearing high heels will not help because sometimes it messes up your womb. Mm. There are some people 24 hours, they are always in this high heel, high heel, high heel. And if you're a young lady listening to me, you can mess up your womb. No doctor can fix this unless you stop wearing the high heel. So there are some informations and some uh, knowledge that we need to know and understand if you want to get out some of these bondage. You see, prayer is good, but sometimes you can pray and fast and fast, but the little change, you see, the little, uh, what, um, you, it's called the vineyard or something. Mm -hmm. yeah, something. The little foxes. The little foxes, they spoil the vineyard. So sometimes little things, it's not big things, but mm -hmm. just tiny little thing you don't know can put you into bondage. 
So I want to encourage our listeners and all of us who are on the phone that we who are listening to us today that know what problem, what your bondage is. Seek for the appropriate help. Sometimes you have to discipline yourself. Mm. Sometimes you, you have to work it out yourself, just like our mothers were saying. Don't depend on somebody to do it for you. When it comes to certain things, you have to do it your own self. So mm. this is what I want to encourage everybody. And I know that with the Lord on our side, no matter what your struggles are, he's able to help us and get us out from whatever situation that we find ourselves in. May the Lord bless us all. Amen. 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 Mommy, is the high hill where some people call mocas? <laughs> ah, the pointer, the, the, the seven inch or whatever, that skinny thing, the high hill, it pushes your womb and then sometimes you, it's hard to get a baby to even conceive. <laughs> God bless you so much. God bless you so much. Boy, Debbie, we will take your closing again. Okay. Thank you so very much. And shackled and unshackled. Mm. It is such a huge problem that everyone will face one time or other. Mm. Um, in, our, in our being raised, in, in the schools we go to, wherever we find ourselves, sometimes shackles are placed on us, consciously or unconsciously. Mm -hmm. And um, our mothers have made it all well clear that indeed our first step is accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And then feasting on his word, mm -hmm. who knowing who we are in him, not only that, but also worshiping him, and then not only that, but like I said, dancing, not only that, but being mindful also of the other people around so that we don't place shackles on others as we have received shackles. So as we'll be continuing next week, I just want to encourage anyone who is on the line who have heard us and who is feeling down, who is feeling shackled, who is feeling mm -hmm. that there's nowhere to go, no place to turn, nobody cares. I just want to encourage them that there is someone who cares, someone who sticks closer than a brother, and mm -hmm. his name is Jesus. He loves you, he cares. Open yourself up to him. Let us not close ourselves to him. Let us open up. Because some people, when they even come to Jesus, they are hiding secrets. They are closing themselves up. But he knows everything. Every little secret, anything about you, he knows. So let us open up to him. Like the woman who said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my own belief. Mm -hmm. So that he can have his way in us. And the shackles will be broken step by step. So that we'll be free to dance to the glory of the Lord. Amen. 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 God bless you so much more, Debbie. Jesus said, lose him and let him go. God bless you so much. God bless you so much more, Doris. Please do take your closing as well. Okay, so I thank God so, so, so much for this topic. Very educative. And I know that God through this broadcast will liberate people. Mm -hmm. People will really know the truth and have a way to live a joyous life. I'm ending this with Psalm 91 verse 12, mm -hmm. where the word of God says that he will set his angels, he will command, God will command his angels so that we will not, so you won't even hurt your foot to a stone. Mm. Why that? Why that? Why is God commanding angels so mm. that we will not hurt our food? Mm. You know, as a person, we are walking. No matter how fast you are walking, if you hit your foot, if you hit your foot, then is it to or against a stone, whichever we don't have whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it slows you down uh -huh. yes it slows you down and it can disorient you it can uh -huh. take you off gear it can so many things can happen but so it's a, it becomes a shackle 
the things that you are aim at, the things that you want to do. You see, when you are outside and you, the, in the advanced countries, it is easy for you to have a lab test mm -hmm. and they tell you everything. You know, sometimes when we talk about prayer and fasting, it, it, it is. You know, but if you are here or you've lived at a place where I used to live, where even the machine that we used to take um, BP, you go there and they tell you that the, the, the machine has been locked. It is there that you know the power of prayer. <laughs> it is there. You appreciate it that you will know that <laughs> your head is aching, you are having the symptoms, and they are telling you you don't have the machine. You've been to the like the big hospital <laughs> there, and they are telling you that <laughs> the nurse that came on the night duty when he was she was leaving, she locked the, the BP machine in there. It is there that you know that you have to pray your way through. You see, mm -hmm. so God has made this provision. It was there that I learned this verse that God says he will mm -hmm. command his angels to take charge so that mm -hmm. I, Doris, I will not be slowed down. I will not be disoriented. I will not be derailed. I will mm -hmm. not die. And I use it to pray. It is mm -hmm. the word of God. It is in there for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So whoever is going through, and you can be, and this thing that we are talking about, the mere fact that you have accepted Jesus Christ doesn't guarantee that you will not go through some of these things. Yeah. You will go through them. Mm -hmm. But when you go through them, we have a God who is ready 24-7. He said that for the Lord of hosts is his name. Our mm -hmm. Redeemer is strong. The Redeemer mm -hmm. is waiting for you to cry unto him. He will redeem redeem you. Mm -hmm. Don't stay in there. Whatever thing that you are going through, don't stay in there and lament and cry and talk hey, this is my problem. Go to the other side of the river and start confessing the word of God. Mm -hmm. Believe in the God that you has saved you as a Christian. And as Mama Abigail said, if you, if you don't know Jesus Christ, then you, you, are, you are not starting at all. You are, you've not even started because no. it is only through Jesus Christ that you can be saved. So if you are listening to us and you don't know Jesus today, we pray that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. He comes no. into your life, becomes your Lord, and he will take control. But if you are a Christian and you are going through any form of difficulty, there is help for you. And the help still is found in Jesus Christ. Just go to him. He understands. The, the Bible Hebrew says it. And I said, we don't have a high priest who does not. Oh, yeah. But we have a high priest who has gone through it. Yeah. He knows it. He has came and mm -hmm. took this form. Mm -hmm. He should go. Everybody is that you have, you can assess God, go to God, he's your father. Because of the adoption of God, you've become his sibling. Or you talk mm -hmm. to your brother about the issue. Pray fast and wait upon him. The victory is on the way to get to you, and God will bless. God bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Our high priest is in the order of Melchizedek. Mommy, God bless you so much. I see some comments here. Mama Abigail, I'm getting ready to come to you after I acknowledge our people. Thank you, Mama Margaret. Discipline and consistency is the key in weight loss. God bless you so much. Auntie Nanako, she's the former auntie. Sandra, who's the God bless you all, women of God. COP is really blessed to have you all. God bless you. We are blessed to have you always here with us. And Uncle Joshua said, good point, Mama Margaret. Discipline is key. God bless you. Auntie Ellen, so new. God bless you, Mama Ophori. No matter the bondages, there is hope in Christ. God bless you. Yo, a word to the wise is enough. Well, hmm, that is Auntie Nanakos. Auntie Linda, we are them says, amen and amen. God bless you, Mama Debbie. And my dear sister says, I wish our wonderful women can handle racial shackles next week. It's a big deal here. Just a thought, though. So right there, he's doing the question. And Uncle Joshua says, I agree, Pastor. 
and Auntie Mary chased her and says, Mama, I put you, you will kill me. She was laughing when you were talking. And he said, yeah, I have a witness. Thanks, Dad. That's my husband talking. Auntie, you can tell her, day of fear. She said, thank you, Ma Dora. Our Redeemer is so strong. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. And Auntie Mary chased her and says, the victory is on the way. God bless you, Mama Doris. And Auntie Helen Bruni is here. My sister-in-law, this is Brenda Sesa, was here. God bless you also. And so many people on here, we appreciate you all. Kindly share and we will keep acknowledging our sharers. God bless you. Mama Abigail, please will take your closing as well. Thank you. And God bless us all. Amen. I just want to um, recap with the example that uh, Doris gave about the prodigal son. Mm. To be unshackled, that one of the first things is for you to come to yourself. Mm. And it means you have to be humble. Mm. Mm. You need to accept the situation in which you are. When you come to yourself and you are not humble enough, you will not accept where you are mm. and you will not seek for the help that you need. All of us have said many things that are very, very helpful. I want us to just close with the story of Esau mm. in Genesis chapter 27. After his brother had taken his blessing and he came to his father, he said, I'm your son, your firstborn, reminding his father who he was. He had forgotten he was the firstborn when he was given the, his birthright to his brother. Mm -hmm. But now he had come to himself. And he was telling his father, reminding him, I'm your son, your mm. firstborn. When we come to the realization of who we are, that is a step towards getting unshackled. Mm. And then he asked his father, do you mm. have only one blessing? Mm. Only one blessing mm. that you are telling me that you have given the blessing over to my brother. But what I just said is what I want us to take home with that. He said, but when you grow restless, mm -hmm. you shall break his book. Amen. On your neck. So when you have become, when you come to yourself in humility and mm. realize who you are okay. and bring yourself to that level and say that, God, I'm here. Now I know. You said you have, you, you, you know who I am already. And you created me that you already. I've messed up and I've been shackled. But now I have come standing on the word of God. He said, when you grow restless, Mm -hmm. You shall break it on your neck. And the restlessness has all been captured in the everything that we have said, standing on the word of God, praying, seeking for help. When you are restless, when you are within yourself and crying out, mm -hmm. telling God that, hey, I need something to be done. Because God, have you got only one blessing? Mm -hmm. I need to be unshackled. And have you got only one blessing for the world? No, he has blessings galore for all of us. Amen. So when we come to ourselves in humility, then when we grow restless, restless in prayer, restless in standing on the word of God, restless in accepting that who we are, instead of listening to what people have defined us to be, then we shall be able to break the yoke. In psychiatry, the, it is well known that when the patient accepts his condition and says, hmm, what is wrong with me? Why am I looking this way? Then it is 50% of the disease gone. We need to come to that realization of accepting ourselves in humility, realizing what shackles have been put on us and disowning them in Christ. When we do that and we grow restless enough, we shall be able to break the yoke of one another. Amen. Amen. Amen.
The anointing will break the yoke. The anointing will break the yoke. God bless you so much, Marie, for showing us that when you're restless, you break the yoke. I'm going to get ready for more, Abigail, please, to ask that you pray with us. But thank you for pointing us to humility. Auntie Ellen, God bless you. She says, women of God. Victory is on the way. God bless you, Marjorie. So God bless you so much, Abigail. When we are restless, when we are restless, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free. Verse 19, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the eternal, and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently. Then he began to speak to them the scripture you have just heard has been fulfilled this very day. Look for 18 all the way to 21 from the New Living Translation. Jesus himself is speaking. This is the day of freedom. God bless you, all wonderful mothers, for such a powerful exposition of this topic. Very profound. Mwabi go, if you could please pray with us. I will pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we are so grateful to you for another session with you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for opening and understanding to what being shackled is all about and what it also means to be unshackled. We are praying, Father, at this time that even as we, you have explained everything to us, touch each and every one of us. And Lord, if anybody is shackled in whichever way, Holy Spirit, break through the shackle. We are praying that whatever it takes for us to be unshackled lies in your hand. So Father God, give us the direction and we pray that your mighty hand will be upon each and every body who has been shackled. We are praying that Lord, the blood of Jesus, that he poured, to take us away from whatever slavery the enemy wanted to put us in will be at work in the lives of everybody who is hearing our, our voice and anybody who will hear the voice later on this program. We are praying that, Lord, we will be unshackled and, Lord, there will be freedom in our hands and you will teach us how to use the freedom mm -hmm. by your name. We are praying that as we go back to wherever we came from, Lord, you will continue to be with us and you will lead us. Mm. And Lord, help us to stay in the freedom that you have given to us. Jesus, without you, we are nothing. All Jesus. those who have not have the, had the saving knowledge of you, Lord, we are praying that your mighty hand will reach them. Holy yes. Spirit, continue to lead us. Continue yeah. to direct us. Give us wisdom. And Lord, the part that you need us to play, to stay in this freedom, teach us and give us the enablement and the empowerment to do so. We pray for every panelist on this program, that Lord, you continue to bless us yes. with understanding yes, that from above. Holy Spirit, you continue to teach and explain your word to us mm. so that when we come, it will not be us, but it will be you proclaimed. And Lord, to reach out to the people that you have assigned to hear your word. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Let's say Joyce, Presley, Henrietta, Presley, Dora, Mama Margaret, Mama Debbie, Mama Doris, Mama Abigail. God bless you all. Thank you so much. And see you again, God willing, next week. And all of you who are with us, we appreciate you. All of you who are always sharing, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you. And have a blessed week and happy Independence Day to everybody here in the U.S. Have a pleasant night. Bye. Thank you all.